Hi, chapter 37. We have a half day on Thursday and Fiona sends me with a shopping list to the definition. That's the new eight shop. She's still in play rehearsals, so her free time is at a premium right now. It is hard to excuse accuse Fiona of treating this spill, spell uh, as an any other new hobby. She has to master yet another string on her ever-growing bow. I'm trying not to be irritated by it. Maeve Chambers, the shopkeeper, announces as I walk through the door. It's the only place in the world where someone is guaranteed to call me by my full name. Today there is dreaminess to the way she says it, like she's not completely focused. She's moving some dry herbs between her fingers, lavender flowers shredding in her palms. Hey, I say, unfurling my list. I don't want to or need to fall into an other psychic conversation with her. I just need to get some candles and other supplies. I pluck what I need from the fairy sections. I am so accustomed to this shop now that I am half convinced that I could run it for an afternoon if she ever wanted me to. The silence between us is unsettling. I am used to her chatter her advice, her weird tidbits about my menstrual cycle. Instead, she has drifted to the window and is staring listlessly, listlessly at the passers-by. Her blonde hair is messy, falling out of its ponytail. She looks exhausted. So I was thinking about what you said about sensitives, I say warily. You know those children of Bridget people? I think the reason they are so powerful right now is because Aaron, he's like their leader, I guess, is one, a bad sensitive. She says nothing. In fact, she doesn't even register that anyone has spoken. They got to my sister, I say, trying to provoke some kind of reaction out of her. My sister and her girlfriend. The word sister seems to shake her out of her stupor. You have to look after your sister, she says. Her voice croaky and tired. I know. Don't let her slip away, Maeve. Don't ever let her slip away. I won't. This is extremely strange now. I'm used to weird declarations from the shopkeeper. But usually there's a thread I can catch and follow to the source. She gazes off again, out of the window. Do you know what they used to sell in this shop before I took over? No. Statues of the Virgin Mary and the Infant Jesus of Prague. Is that the one holding the little egg thing? She doesn't answer me. Sometimes it's easy to forget that for everyone over 30, at least religion has played a huge part in their lives. Mum has stories about nuns who used to terrorise her, and Abby had a famous phase where she was obsessed with becoming a child saint. No one my own age thinks to talks about the church at all, even though we are constantly preparing at school for some mass or another. But even that is just singing and Hail Marys occasionally, cracking out of beatitudes for a special occasion. I didn't think I should take over the lease, not after everything that happened. Her eyes go back to the window. I feel I should leave, but I won't have a chance to come back again before the ritual. And we need this stuff. If we are to have any hope of this spell working, 
I quietly locate the items on my list. Hemlock, mandrake, Saturday's plants, black candles for a new moon. I get stuck with it. I get stuck when it comes to tanzanite crystals for communication with the spirit world. There's a huge display of them by the door, but not all of them are very clearly marked. I keep googling tanzanite and holding the images up to the various rocks, but I'm having trouble finding anything that looks like the blue stone of my, on my screen. Eventually, I find a little pot filled with rough fingernail sized stones that look like they might be what I'm looking for. I take photos and send them to Fiona for confirmation. Do you work here? I jump. A delivery guy in a red DPD coat is standing patiently with a cardboard box. This is a tracked delivery from Italy. I need you to sign it off for me. I look around and see that the shopkeeper is gone. She must have slipped out while I was comparing and contrasting crystals. My notepad still in my hands, I realize that the delivery guy must think I'm taking inventory. I feel a bit proud. Proud, thinking. I look old enough and cool enough to work in a shop like this. Thank God I changed out of my uniform at school. I peer at the box, judging by the packaging. It's a shipment of tarot. Italy has the best tarot in Europe. Fiona and I have already started talking about convincing our parents to let us do the exchange there, even though, as I keep grumbling, it would mean having to speak Italian. The man is still looking at me, waiting for an answer. Um, I cast a glance around and, uh, sorry, around again. Sure, I can sign it for it. Now, he's skeptical. Do you work here, right? Yes, this is my mum's shop. Wow, what a surprisingly easy lie. I help her out. He shrugs and hands the electronical pad over. I scroll something fake and he doesn't even look at it. The machine spits a little receipt and he hands it to me along with the package. All right, have a good day, Miss Evans. I stiffen. Miss Evans? Somehow I manage to put the box on the counter without letting it fall to the floor and just nod at the DPD guy until he leaves the shop. I read the label on the package. Fionella Evans, definition, 56 Peter Street, Kilbeg. Evans, the shopkeeper's last name, is Evans, Harriet's sister. No, that can't be. She's told me her sister's name before. It was something witchy. What was it? Um, Willow. Fionella Evans, Evans, maybe not a sister, a cousin, a coincidence. Wow. What was her sister's damn name? She mentioned it again when we had the conversation about sensitives. Yes, I was standing right here beside the crystals. What was it? And where is she? My hands start to sweat, soaking the receipt in my hands. Finally, I put the box on the counter and lay the delivery receipt on top of it. That's when everything clicks. F. Evans. F. Evans. I line it up in my head like algebra equation. H. Evans. Heaven. The shopkeeper called her sister Heaven. All this time. I've assumed that the shopkeeper was keeping her own name a secret because of some kind of business, like privacy. Her way of saying 
Hey, I like you, kid, but don't get too close. I remember the last thing she said to me when we were stuck in the psychic fishing together, right after she tried to cast me out of the shop. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Clearly, Heaven or Harriet had done this and lost her life in the process. Maeve, she's back. The library of freshly cut herbs I realize is also hidden. Uh, is also a hidden door. Fionella is standing next to it as it hangs ajar. And the dark stairwell is just about visible behind it. She must live upstairs. She might even own the whole building. I signed for your package, I say, my voice quivering. Fionella, she sits down at the stool, perched behind the till, and looks bleakly at the box. Thank you, she says limply. She looks like she hasn't slept in days. I'm beginning to suspect she went upstairs for a quick power nap or possibly to take a, some kind of medication. Why? I don't know where to begin. Why anything? At this point, I stop. Recalibrate. Recalibrate. You knew I summoned the housekeeper from the day we came in asking about the silly school project. Yes, there's so much pain, so much exhaustion in her voice. I can't even summon the good sense to be angry with her. What's wrong with you? I finally ask in frustration. She laughs a little, not a cruel laugh, but by any means, more the laugh a heart surgeon might give if you asked her what exactly she got up to all day. I got, I've got nothing left, Maeve. I'm out. Out of what? Everything. Of magic, of power, energy, of my mind. I've spent the last three weeks using everything I have to pr protect you, and I've got nothing left. As I said before, she drifts a little, as if she's about to fall asleep right there on the stool. I've just, I'm just a kitchen witch, not a sensitive, not a sorceress, just a garden variety middle-aged Wiccan with a little stolen magic, trying to help a girl who can't help herself. What do you mean? What, what, what have you been doing? Haven't you noticed that the nightmares have begged of that you seem to be able to slip out of dangerous situations a little too easy. Jesus, the sweet arrogance of the arrogance, yes, arrogance of youth, what I wouldn't do to get it back. I think for a moment the nightmares, they have stopped. There was the one I shared with Rue, where we both saw the shoe floating down the bag, but I hadn't had my nightmares about the housekeeper by myself in ages. Even the shoe dream wasn't a nightmare as such. It was a warning, a clue, a poster on the great cosmic bulletin board. I had assumed that I had just gotten stronger by myself, but no, Fionella has been shielding me. You've been casting protection spells on me, she nods, every night. I only know when I see you whether you they've worked or not. I think for a moment, carefully sifting through the last few weeks. There was a riot in the Cyprus. People were hurt, badly hurt, but I walked out of there without even giving the police a statement. A brief smile, a slight roll of her eyes. Well, it's that, it, it's that nice. Why? 
Why were you doing this? You barely even know me. Because, Maeve, I'm en old enough to know when history is repeating itself. Every day of my life, I have to live with what happened to heaven. Do you know what that's like? To have failed your own sister and then to see another sensitive coming, come waltzing in 30 years later. It rattles you, pet. It rattles you. And you knew about the housekeeper straight away. I had my suspicion, especially when the weather started to turn and all this craziness with those fundamentalists starting to kick off. You are right, by the way. That boy, that blonde boy, Aaron, Aaron, Orion, Jesus, it's like his parents knew he was going to be Hitler, a Hitler youth. I laugh a little, despite everything. She smiles back, pleased, and pleased to have found the energy to make a small joke. He smelt the weakness, the inner imbalance, like a shark smells blood in water. Children of Bridget was a tiny, hateful little pack based way back up the country. They had about five followers and suddenly this boy and his American money shows up here just as the weather turns. I knew something was happening and I didn't want another teenage girl to be at the center of it. When I first met Aaron, I say pulsing, out the memory, he would barely interact with me, even when I was at his gross meeting playing his emotional blackmail games. It was like I smelled of bad milk. Rue, Rue was the one he had wanted and I thought that my strength and self-confidence were the reasons he wouldn't come close. God, she's right. I really am that arrogant. He could smell the protection spell, or sense it. Anyway, if he knows what he is, you can bet your life he knows what you are. He's probably been waiting for weeks for whatever is protecting you to run out of juice. He remembered me straight away. He knew me as the girl in the wedding dress even though I had been at the back of the shop the whole time, even though Fiona was the beauty, the fire, the one with the bare leg out, the one everyone was looking at, at uh, she shouted about atheism. A terrifying thought crawls into my head on its belly. My conversation with him at Bridie's, my boyfriend's gig, my sister at college. Aaron has been circling me. He can't get to me. So he's going for the people who are closest, slowly weakening my barriers until I give up or give in. Why didn't you talk to me? Because I knew the more I told you, the more you knew, the more you would get involved. So I just thought that maybe, oh, I don't know, that if I kept a bubble around you, the face would pass without you doing anything. Stupid. The balance would correct itself. It often does. It hasn't though. No, she says, massaging her closed eyelids with the tips of her fingers. And I have nothing left to give you. What does that mean? Magic isn't an endless. It's like a crop. It has to have time to renew. And I've spent every last ounce of you on you, Maeve Chambers, so you don't end up like heaven. Why do you call her? It's time for you to leave, Maeve. What? I almost screeched. You can't tell me all that and then expect me to go home. 
Nevertheless, I am. Leave now. I don't want to see you in here for at least a week. And for the love of God, don't do anything before then. I don't have what it takes to protect you. Okay, I say slowly. I'll just buy some. Buy these then. I put the candles and crystals and the herbs on the counter. Fionella grits her teeth fiercely. Maeve, she says, her voice low and authoritative, if you think I'm selling you anything for a ritual, you obviously think I'm as I'm a much stupider woman than I am. But Fionella, sweetheart, I'm too weak to stop you. I'm only just about strong enough to ask. So I'm asking you now, please, 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 do not try to end this in a ritual. Don't overestimate your own power. You don't understand the housekeeper. She has my Fionella puts up, she has my Fionella puts up one finger to silence me. There must be a drop of magic still left in her, because somehow it does. My mouth clamps shut. I cannot stop a ritual I do not approve of, but I can refuse to profit of it. I will not line my pockets with your mistakes. Maeve, now go. And empty and empty-handed I leave. The nightmares start again the same night.